In this screencast, I want to look at using dynamic programming to solve the 0-1 knapsack problem, which is a famous problem in computer science and has lots of variations and is important for a number of reasons. Uh, it's in what's called an NP-complete problem, and we'll go into that later in the course. So, what is your 0-1 knapsack problem? You can think of it as a thief walking into a high-end jewelry store with all sorts of expensive artifacts in it. And there are N of those things scattered around the room, and they're all conveniently labeled with their weights and their values. The thief, not being very athletic, strong, uh, has a knapsack which will only carry, say, 15 kilograms. And so what the thief wants to do is find the most valuable subset of items that fit into the knapsack. So one way for the thief to solve this problem is to look at every subset of the items and see which subset has the most value. Unfortunately, um, that's an exhaustive enumeration pro approach or exhaustive search approach, and it's going to involve looking at 2 to the n different subsets, which, as you know, will take a very long time for any large n. So we need to find a better way for the thief to determine which items they should take in order to maximize their value. So one thing you might consider is using a greedy algorithm. So here's a simple problem um, with just a small weight capacity, five, and only four items to consider. And there are a couple greedy approaches that you might think about. There are others besides these, but these are the two of the common ones. And that is to take the most valuable item first. So I want the column there with the va values in it. So you can just look at those and try to figure out which ones would fit in order of the most valuable item first. Another common approach is to figure out sort of what the value to weight density is of the item and take the ones with the highest value to weight ratio first. So why don't you try to do that, see what happens, and also think about whether or not those give you the optimal solution for this example. So hopefully you had a chance to come up with the greedy answers uh, using the two algorithms we talked about on the previous slide. And if you'll see that greedy, taking the most valuable item first, you pick items 3 and 4, right? Because item 3 is the most valuable, 22, and then 4, 14. So that gives you a total value of 36. If you do highest value to weight ratio first, uh, that will give you item 2, and then item 3. They, it will take up 4 kilograms and will not leave room for either item 1 or item 2. And in that case, the total value would be 32, 10 plus 22. But in fact, the optimal solution is items 1, 2, and 4 uh, with a total value of 37. You can see that they fit. They add up to be exactly 5, and you get 13 plus 10 plus 14, which is 37. So in this case, and in fact, uh, in general, greedy algorithms will not work um, for a 0, 1 knapsack. There are only special times when it will work. So let's move on and try to see what we can do in terms of solving knapsack with dynamic program. Uh, we want to know the maximum value that can be obtained for a set of items. And so we're going to use some notation for this. Uh, v will be the maximum value for n items, a specific set of n items, and W being the capacity of the knapsack. Now we're going to do the same kind of ex thought experiment we've done in previous um, situations in trying to come up with the recurrence relation that describes this function. So remember um, what you, this is the hard part of solving a problem using dynamic programming. Once you've got this done, then afterwards, usually the implementation is pretty straightforward, as you've seen in the examples we've done already. Uh, so again, what we'll do is we'll look at, suppose we're at the end and we've solved this problem. Um, now, which, what does the thief do if they've solved it? They might be curious. Did they or did they not take the last item? Uh, suppose they did. Then what must be true of the other items in the knapsack? 
They must be the most valuable set of items for what problem? So remember, you're going to, you're going to specify the problem by some number of items and some capacity. And in this situation, the thief took the last item, the nth item. Oh, or perhaps you don't have the last item in your knapsack. Then what must be the most valuable set of items? For what problem is that going to be? For what first parameter, which specifies the number of items, and the capacity? So give that some thought, and then, uh, so take a time out, and then go on to the next slide. So here we have uh, specified, again, the same 0-1 knapsack problem, n items, specified by weight and a value, weight and a value for the nth item, and a knapsack capacity. We're going to use the same notation we talked about in the last slide for the maximum value for the set of n items, the capacity of w. If the nth item is not in the optimal solution, then clearly the value for having n items with capacity w is just the value for having n minus 1 items um, to choose from with the capacity of w. Again, this is if the thief has already found the optimal solution and they looked and they saw that the nth item was not in the optimal solution. On the other hand, if they look and the nth item is in the optimal solution, then what do you get? Well, then the thief is going to have what? They're going to have the value of the nth item and the value of what they would get if they had the, n, the first n minus 1 items to choose from, but only a capacity of w minus the weight of the nth item. So the nth item takes up this much space or weight in the knapsack, but you get this much value, and then you have to fill the knapsack with the remaining capacity as best you can from the previous n minus 1 items. So where does this lead you? This leads you to this recurrence relation, okay, that the value for n, all n items with the capacity of w is equal to the max of the value just with the first n minus 1 items with the capacity of w, or the value with n minus for using the n minus 1 items with a lower capacity, w minus wn, plus the value of the nth item. So here's basically our recurrence relation. We've only specified it for the last item, but you can see, as you've done in previous examples, that this is easy to generalize now for a general recurrence relation. So let's fill in our table. Our table is going to have to be two-dimensional because we have two parameters. Okay, and we'll have the items going as rows and the capacities as columns. Uh, we have to initialize with zeros so we can just use our recurrence relation in a double loop, make it easy, nested loop. And so now I'm going to walk through how this works uh, and fill in parts of the table. So we're here at 1, 1, and now what's that going to be? Well, if they don't take, if the thief doesn't take item 1, uh, it's going to be 0. Okay? If the thief, but the thief really can't take item 1, so it won't fit, so this is clearly going to be 0. And if we go to the next position, okay, now it could either be 0 if he doesn't take item 1, or he take, can take item 1, in which case it's going to be, the value is 13, plus it'll fit, but it uses up all the capacity, so we go back to here, and the value of the knapsack with uh, 0 items and 0 weight is 0. So this particular cell gets 13. All right, and then looking at this cell, right, if the thief doesn't take anything, doesn't take the first item, he gets thir thir zero. If he does take the item, he gets 13, and he goes back to here, right, so n minus 1, and then w, which is 3 minus 2, gives you 1. And so the value of that, that knapsack is zero. So again, here, 
the thief will get 13. And the rest of this first line has exactly the same argument with it. Okay, now go to the second line where there's two items. So now what we're going to do is consider the second item and see what happens with that. So you look at that, and the second item only waits one. So the second item will fit. So if we don't pick it up, we get zero. But if we do pick it up, we'll get ten. All right. Now we move over to here. Again, the second item will fit. If we take the second item, we'll get 10, and we have to subtract one from the capacity, so which the capacity is currently two, so that'll get us down to one, and so that'll be zero. So one option here is 10 plus zero, or the thief doesn't pick up the second item, in which it'd be 13. Okay, so this would be uh, the 10 I'm sorry, this would be the 10 plus 0, and this would be the um, just picking up, not picking up the second item, and getting the value for the first item. So that would be that one. So we get 13 there. Okay, now, here's where it really starts to get interesting. So, at this stage, we can not take the second item. If we don't take the second item, then we'll get 13. If we do take the second item, okay, then we'll get 10 for that. Okay, and that uses up one unit of capacity. Okay, so then we have to go back to n minus one item, so that'll be the row, this row, and we only used up one, so that would put us here, so we get 13, okay, from having the first item with a capacity of 2. So now we have 10 plus 13, and so what we end up with here is 23. Now, take your time and make sure you understand where that 23 came from, All right? It's, um, this is the Take the second item, so we get 10 plus 13, which is what? That's cell 1, 2. Which is just V1, 2. Okay, and now the rest of this row... Again, was ne is now going to stay the same. It'll stay be 23, 23. Okay, now we're in the third item. We're working on the third item. And the third item has weight 3, so that's not going to come into play for a while. So we're not going to be able to take it until we get up to a weight of 3. So this would still stay 10, this will stay 13, and then we'll be here. We could take the third item, that would be a value of 22 um, plus 0. So, 22 plus 0. Got a, the capacity goes down to 0. Or, we don't take it and we just get 23. So, obviously, we won't take it and we get 23. But now, in this next cell, the situation's changed a little bit. Now, if we don't take the third item, we get 23. But if we do take the third item, right, we'll get 22 for the value of the third item. And then we'll subtract 3 from the capacity of 4. That'll take us down here to a capacity of 1 in the first two items. So that'll be 10. So that'll be 10 plus 22. That'll give us 32. And here, same argument, we'll end up with 35, because now we'll be using the 13. All right, and then the final row, um, uh, that's we got the fourth item, that's got a capacity of 2 uh, and a value of 14. See if you can fill that in. And so pause, try to fill that in, and then 
continue and look at what the answer is in the next slide. So here's the table filled in. Uh, you can see the last row looked like this. We got our value of 37. Um, this is 36. Um, and this is 35. So to trace back, um, you do um, you check and see well where did this 37 came from? Well, that had, doesn't it's not equal to 35. So it we must have taken the item. And by taking the item, that means we got 14, and we go have to lose two in capacity. So that must be 14 plus 23. Yes, indeed, that's 37. So we're here, and we took the fourth item. Here, we didn't take the third item. The 23 came from here. So then we're here. We look. The second item was worth 10 and a weight of 1. So that came from here. So we take the second item. And then this 13 came from here. We took the first item. So we took the first, second, and fourth item, just as we discussed in the previous slide as being the optimal solution. So here's some pseudocode for you to look at. Um, here's the filling in the table. Um, hopefully you're getting the hang of this by now. Um, initialize the base cases, the top row and the left-hand column um, with zeros. Loop over the rows, loop over the columns, and use the recurrence relation. Pretty straightforward generally to write this part. And then the trace back, again, what you do is check. Basically, you write down some condition that checks to see where which of the choices were taken to get the value in that uh, particular cell. And in this case, if it's equal to the one, the value right above it, then no item was taken. Otherwise, the item was taken, and you need to uh, decrement the capacity, which is J, the second parameter. And if J becomes less than or equal to zero, you break out. So hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of how you would have to write the algorithm. Um, obviously, there are a lot of details to fill in, but um, that should give you the outline. So think about um, what this means in terms of computational complexity. And also, you might look at some of the variations uh, zero one knapsack. It's an, as I mentioned, it's an important um, problem in computer science, and we'll be coming back to it in later screencasts.